Hi everyone, Nicholas Bafidis here from, well, it's dark outside now, but I'm still going to welcome you from sunny Cyprus. So another video tutorial, this one is all about the Cambridge ICT IGCSE examination uh, paper, paper three, the 0417 course. And specifically for all of you guys, all of you students are going to be taking this IGCSE exam. Now I've specifically chosen this paper because it has a very heavy loaded and comprehensive web design uh, question paper to it. The spreadsheet part is not all that complicated and there really isn't that much to it as you're going to see in this paper. But the web design part is quite heavy and there's a lot of um, features which have been recently introduced in the past couple of years. So very likely you're gonna see these features in your paper. So to try and keep this paper as short as possible, let's get started. Okay, first off, we're gonna see our paper, The what we can see here. If I scroll down, this is the first part of the paper. Now, uh, it starts off with saying, you know, you've been given these files, so you should all have these files here given to you straight away. And it then starts with saying, create an evidence document. And that evidence document, you're gonna create it in the same folder, and you need to save it as, and it's got the example here, J2231 evidence underscore, your center number, and then your candidate number. Now to save time, I've already uh, created this part. So if we have a look here, and I, in fact, let's just carry on reading that, um, because I always say read the complete section first. It's gonna really help you understand. So it then just goes into say, create a new folder called J2231, locate all of these files and put them inside that J2231 folder. Now to save time, I've already done this, so I will show you where I have that. Here we go. So I've got my folder here with all my files inside. You can see here are my files. I've made my uh, evidence document. So if I open that, I've renamed it properly. I've also added my name, center number, and candidate number in the header. So these will appear on every single page. So that part's already been done. I'll minimize that because I'm going to need it. I've also created my folder, J2231 and located all the files it told me to locate and place them in this folder. Any other files which essentially are going to be used for the Excel or the spreadsheet component of this exam, I've left in my main folder. Now, in the question paper, we're going to see the next step is it says, open the file j31balloon.jpg in a graphics package, edit the image by rotating it 90 degrees clockwise, reflecting, flipping it horizontally. Now, um, I'm just going to read the whole sections, but I always say read the entire question. So I'm going to read all the way up to here before we start the web page part and see what else it says. It then says, save this new image in your J2231 folder in a PNG format using the file name balloon underscore, followed by your candidate number, for example, balloon underscore your candidate number. So I'm just highlighting the little things which are really interesting and things that I'm going to have to do. Display the contents of the J2231 folder showing the folder name, all file names, the extensions, the file sizes, image dimensions, and for the video, the frame height and frame width. So I'm going to do all of this section um, in one go. So let's begin. So from here, I'm going to right click on my file, the J31 balloon, and I'm going to say open with, I'm going to open this with Photoshop. Now, in Photoshop, the first thing I need to do here, it says is I need to open, uh, rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. So I'm going to go to image, image rotation, 90 degrees clockwise. That's going to flip that round. Let me just reduce that zoom there so I can center my image for you. And then the next thing is I need to flip this horizontally. So I'm just going to go over here again, image, image rotation, and I'm going to flip this horizontally. Okay, now the next thing it said was to save this as a PNG file. I'm going to go to file, save a copy. I'm going to select here my type, my save as type. I'm going to choose PNG and I'm going to give this the name. It wants J2231. Uh, no, it actually wants balloon. So it's all small letters. It's got it. Uh, balloon and then underscore my candidate number. I'm just going to use one, two, three, four, five. And I need to save this in my J2231 folder, the one which I created. And I'm going to click on save. And I get this message here, large file sizes. Yep. It doesn't say anything about the size of the file. It shouldn't meet any criteria. So I'm just going to click OK. 
and that part is done so i'm just gonna close photoshop don't need that i don't need to save the original jpeg uh, nope so if i look here now i've also got this png file now it wants me to display um uh, take a screenshot of my folder with the folder name visible so i'm just gonna reduce this so they can't see any of the files i've got there and i need to change my view so the view that i'm going to use and i always use if you want all the details is go to view content now the content view you can see here it gives you look at this one the video file here it actually gives you the frame height and the width it gives you this uh, type of file so even if you don't have the extensions displaying that's fine it displays the extension file type here it says when it was modified the dates and that's what they want so i'm just going to take a quick screenshot from here just this piece here i don't need all of it but i do need to make sure that this folder up here is displayed the folder name i'm using dark mode please don't use dark mode for your screenshots um it doesn't print well so i'm just going to call this because it's called evidence one evidence one press enter and paste that there so there's my first screenshot i'm just going to press enter to get ready i'm going to type evidence two so that i'm ready for my next one and i'm just going to click on a quick save always save when you do something and close all right so now we're going to go to the next part of the question so there it is take a screenshot we've done that now then here's the interesting part so this is my web page now i need to read all of this bit here all the way down to number three highlight all the things which are important to me and only then will i be able to really get a good understanding of what's going on so i'm just going to drag this into my main window over here could just be easier for me there we go okay so it says here you're going to create a web page for tawara balloon safaris the web page and style sheet must work in any browser make sure that your style sheet contains no html make sure your html and style sheets are efficient as as efficient as possible that's the important one here so we need to implement uh, efficient programming techniques we'll see that as we get to it create in your j2231 folder a web page called tbs.htm so i'm just going to highlight these and then i'm just going to do everything in one go this web page must be created using a single table and must work in all browsers the table must fit 90 percent of the width and height of the browser window the table must have a structure as shown in this diagram so if we just analyze this structure here and uh, this is what i always tell my students to do first thing to do is always uh, extend all of your uh, all, all of the lines so that you can see exactly how many uh, rows and columns there are if you because when you start merging it gets a little bit difficult to do so i'm just going to use a red line here and i'm going to have a look here so i'm going to extend this line oops if i can draw this in a straight line that will be useful let me just undo that right so let's just do a raise there and come back to this so i'm going to go to draw again and i'm going to extend this line hopefully i'll be able to draw in a straight line now there we go that one that one that one and that one and here i've got the line here i'm going to extend that out okay so now if i look at this i've got one two three four five rows and a maximum one two three columns so i want five rows and three columns now uh, if I've got the maximum rows or uh, number of rows and columns, then it's really easy for me to create this. So I'm just going to delete the lines. The next thing that I'm going to notice from this image is the following. So we can see here these double lines, this one and this one. This basically is the property for the collapse and it's been set to separate. In other words, when you've got two cells, if I've got a cell here, if it's border collapse, you see the border of each cell. What if it's border collapse equals separate? If the border collapse equals collapsed, then it's going to look like this. So the two cells with one line separating those cells. So because I get these double lines, I know that's going to be border collapse separate. Okay, other things that I'm going to notice here is the width. So it's using percentages. It's not using pixels. So this is really important. And so this is going to be altogether the width 100%. 
and you can see that 70 or 30 is going to be 100. Um, the other thing again here to notice is uh, in the percentages we've got this is the width, that's width, this one the percentage is height. So it's going by the height, it's not going by the width. Again here you've got width, width and this one is height. So it's going to use 10% of the height of that window, of that table. So all of these things are really, really important for you to see and understand before you start working in uh, creating this table. So the next thing that we need to have a look at is, let's read the rest of it. Each table cell is identified with a letter. Some dimensions are shown. Uh, these must be set as percentage values. Okay, so that's really important. So they have to be set as percentage values. Do not set the height of cells A, B, C, E, or F. Okay, so these cells here, A, B, C, and F, that one, that one, all of these that just say width um, and the E and F, we don't set the height. So essentially what that means is when we're going to place something inside this cell, we're going to set it to use 100% of the cell. So let's say this is a picture. It's going to fill the width of this and the height of that picture is going to be automatically adjusted whatever height that is by maintaining the aspect ratio. So it's going to fill uh, the width of this cell and the height is going to be adjusted accordingly. Okay, so um, that's all about the, the actual table itself. What else does it say? Uh, the cell constants shown in the diagram must not appear on your final web page. So we're not going to be entering all these uh, text that it's got in here. Table borders must appear on the final web page. So that basically borders, um, the borders will appear. Oops, I've crossed that out instead of highlighting it. So borders will appear on the final web page. So when I'm creating my table, I'm going to set these uh, to solid. I'm going to set them to one pixel. I'm going to see later on what pixel dimension it's going to be. Um, and it's going to be a solid uh, line. So let's get started. Okay, I've opened Dreamweaver. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, New. I'm going to start the HTML file, click Create. And then the first thing that I need to do is to save this in my folder, which I created at the start with the correct name. So it's going to be File, Save As. And it says that it should be tbs.htm. So I'm just going to call this TBS. It's all in small letters. I'm just going to leave, whether it puts HTM or HTML, it's not really that important. I'm just going to click on Save. And here is my HTML file. Now, notice I saved this before I did anything else. And this is absolutely vital because when we're going to start adding images from our folder, they're going to be linked from the same default root folder rather than it having to put in a, a relative path. So very important. Now, with this saved, I'm going to click one time in my WYSIWYG area. Remember, WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. And the reason is because here you can see my insertion point is outside of the body area. So if I go and create a, a table now, table, whatever table that is there, it's actually created it outside of this body area here. So it's not going to display my web page. Look, there's no table here. So a, a quick trick is click one time in the WYSIWYG area. You will see it's going to put your insertion point here in the body tag. Now I can go to insert table and I'm going to create my table as it says. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm saying that the rows is five. We calculated that. We said three columns. I've already set this uh, from before 90, uh, but I want percent. There it is. So I need to make sure this is on the percent. So it's using 90% width. And I've got the border thickness to one. Now, whether the border thickness is going to be two later on in the style sheet, that doesn't matter. But I'm going to put my border thickness there because I know I'm going to have visible lines at the end. Click on OK. And I have my table. Now, the next step is to make my table look like this. So I need to see what's merged. Uh, the two columns which are here. So this is actually, uh, uh, sorry, the two cells. Uh, a cell here and a cell here is merged together. Uh, the same here and the same here. These ones are separate, these are merged, and all of these here are merged as well. So I'm just going to do those very quickly now. So going back to my paper, here I'm going to select all of these. Down in my properties area, I'm going to click on merge cells. I can also do this by right clicking, going to table and saying merge cells. I just find it easier to using this link down here. So merge cells. I'm going to do the same for the second row. 
and the third row and the last row the second uh, second from last that's going to stay split okay so i've got my structure now i need to uh, be very careful and go and do these things here now i need to set the percentages so um, we said rows one two are the width we're adjusting same with uh, row three and row uh, sorry row four row three here and the last one is doing the height and this one here is the width so let's go back and see how we're going to do this now uh, a lot of my students always ask can't we just put the width and the height down here in the properties area well you can but many times it doesn't work because the cells underneath don't match so if i try and if i select this now and try and type 70 percent and then click away you can see it doesn't accept it it doesn't accept it because more than likely this is split into three equal columns 33.333 percent each one and 33.3 times two is not going to be exactly 70. so you do actually get these little um issues here and it's always good to learn to work with the code so i'm going to start i'm going to click inside here now automatically it puts my insertion point in this part of the code because i've clicked in here it puts my in, uh, insertion point here now then um if i don't know the code to change to to add for the width what i'm going to do i'm just going to adjust the width look at that i'm going to put my insertion point here i'm going to click and just drag this to change the width a little bit doesn't matter what i change it to there we go okay automatically because i've changed the width you can see some of these um cells now have got this width parameter in there so i can just copy that i'm going to copy this one for example Control c I'm going to click in this first cell up here, place my insertion point where this one has done. So after TD, it's got the width. So after TD, I'm going to press paste. And there it is. I'll put my width. I'm just going to change that now to 70%. Okay. So that's a quick way of doing it. It did it percentage automatically because the table is, is set as 90%. Okay. The next one as well should also be 70%. This one. So let's click in here that's this row here ah hang on it's actually looking at b um so this one here yep that's the b this one here should be 30 percent so i'm going to change that now so 70 this one's 70 and this one's 30 that's 100 percent. that's perfect let's go to this one that's the next one this one it said 70 percent it doesn't have the width so i'm just going to copy paste that one saves me typing it out as well so I'm going to go there, paste, and change that to 70. This one, uh, let's click on the next one, uh, the third one. So if we have a look, that's the one where we want to be 10% high instead of width. So to come over here, if I want this one to be height, I don't have a height. Well, it makes common sense. Instead of width, I'll put height. But if I just adjust this a little bit like that, you know that? now automatically for this one it's put the height for me can you see that so i'm just going to change whatever number it's put there and i'm going to put 10 percent click over here look at that it's adjusted this is 35 percent width 35 this one is 35 and the last one needs a height of 10. i could just copy this one here again oh there we go Control c and v and there we go okay so now my table is adjusted all of my cells even the merge cells have got the correct percentage there they are there and if we look over here that is eight marks look at that eight marks straight away just for designing that table and setting the percentages for each one always have a double check and make sure you've done everything right so let's move on to the next part number three so number three uh, essentially here what it does it says set the title of the web page to tawara balloon safaris so i'm going to type this in so i'm going to go back to my dreamweaver i'm going to go to my code and if we look up here it's got this tag here automatically title untitled document so in the title tag it says untitled document i'm going to delete untitled document and i'm going to type tawara balloon safaris and make sure you put the capital letters and small letters exactly as it displays that title so that's done that's my default title 
The next one, number four, so let me just get my highlighter. Number four, it says set in the HTML the name of the default target window to underscore new. Okay, now here we're going to do a little bit of HTML code. Again, anywhere inside this head tag. So from where the head opens and the head closes, you need, you need to put the next uh, tag in there, which is the base tag. So I'm just going to go to the end of head and press enter. So I'm within the open and close of the head tag. I'm going to type uh, a triangular bracket there, base. I know it's a correct one because it's identified it there, space. There are two properties, target. And here it wants underscore new. So I'm just going to type it in. It doesn't have underscore new. It's got new. So I'm just going to type underscore new. And then outside here, I close that triangular bracket. Okay. And that's your base target there, the base target window. Okay. A little bit tricky that. You've got to know uh, that little bit of code, but it, it's not that hard. Okay. Let's go back to our question paper. Now, here is where we've got to insert the images inside our table, and we need to make sure these images fit in those percentages that we put. So let's see how we do that. We're going to read all of this, number five, all of this here, just to see, and I'm going to read a little bit more to understand everything that's going on. So place in the cell A, this image, in B, uh, the balloon image saved in step one, so on and so forth. Here, I'm going to put the video, Okay, so I need to put a video tag. Um, and it also wants to display an automated text error message if the browser does not support this video. In E, I'm going to put this image. And in F, I'm going to put this image. Now, I'm going to read on. I always like to read on. Um, place in style attributes in HTML so that each image with its aspect ratio maintained fits the width of the table cell. So we need to make sure we size these items up here so that they fit within the table cell, within these percentage of these cells here that we've put. That's the tricky part. So let's have a look and see what else it says. Add appropriate alternate text to all still images. So we're just going to put a little bit of an explanation there. Place in cell D the text from the file that and set this text as style H2. All right, let's begin. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to add the image J31 banner in cell A. And cell A is this one here. This one here is B. This is C, D, E, F, and G. So let's start. So I'm going to click inside cell A, and I'm going to go insert image and because I saved my HTML file already and I saved it in the same folder with all my other files it finds it straight away so the j31 banner is this one so I'm going to click on that I'm going to click on OK and look at that automatically my image has just blown the proportions of my table apart because this is a really really big image no longer am I getting this 90 percent uh, when I adjust the size of my window because this image is just too big. So what we need to do, we're going to click on the image. We're going to come over here to the code and we're going to see what the width is. Now, I don't care about the height. I want, and it specifically said, make sure the images fit the width of the cells. So I don't want the height. And the reason I don't want the height is because I want to fix the width. And if there is no height property, the height will automatically adjust maintaining the aspect ratio. Okay, so let me not delete the height first so you see what happens. If I make the width 100%, that basically means the image is supposed to take 100% of the width of the cell. So if I click over here now, can you see it fits automatically 100% of that cell but because I've got the height property here, the height is fixed to 333. I, and that's distorting the aspect ratio. I don't want it to distort the aspect ratio. So I'm going to delete that height property. And now when I click in here, there we go. 
Okay, click away. And my table now has automatically adjusted because the image width is 100% the width of the cell it's inside, which is, is containing it. And the height is being automatically adjusted, maintaining the aspect ratio. So in B, in this one here, I want to enter the image, which I saved in step one. That was the PNG file. Exactly the same thing. And because this was a, a width of 30%, uh, okay, again, we're going to adjust the size of that image, the width of that image to be 100%. So image, here is my PNG file. Click OK. It's massive. Look at that. It's just totally distorted my table. I'm going to click on the image, come over here, and I'm going to see here the width and the height. Now, again, um, this cell was uh, based on the width. The image is supposed to take the full width of my table. So I'm going to delete the height property. And I'm going to change the width to 100%. So it takes 100% of the width of the cell. So when I click in my table somewhere else, look at that, straight away, the width is adjusted and the height well, whatever the height is according to the aspect ratio based on the width. Okay, let's go to C. C is this one here. In C, I want to uh, put a video tag. So this is HTML5 code. I'm just going to click on save very quickly. File save. Always save your work. So in here, I'm going to go to insert. I'm, going to, I'm not going to put an image, but I am going to put HTML code. So I'm going to go down, HTML, and I'm going to look for HTML5 video okay and it puts the video tag can you see that here so inside this cell it's now got this video tag here so i want to link this video tag to my video so selecting this going to my properties at the bottom i can see here i've got source so i'm going to click on the folder to browse here is my video it's inside my folder and it's only showing me the video files i'm going to select that and click on okay now, uh, again, with the video, I need to adjust the width of that video to be 100% of the width of this containing cell, cell C. So here, straight after the video tag, I'm just going to put another width here, width equals to speech marks. I could copy this 100%, but I thought I'd type it out this time. And now when I click anywhere in my table, my video is going to take the full width. Now, the height, well, it depends when it's going to preview uh, the website, uh, the web page inside your browser, whatever dimension that video has, it's going to automatically adjust. And we'll see that in a second. I don't want to put the height again because I want to maintain the aspect ratio of the video. It also said that it wants... Uh, an automated message to display if the browser does not support this video type. So in uh, Dreamweaver, you can click on the video, go to the properties and just write the text in the fallback text. So I'm going to say this video type is not supported. OK, and clicking away, we can see here in my HTML code. Let me just make that a bit smaller. In fact, I'm just going to minimize that over here, this uh, class there. So if we look at this code here, where I've got my video tag, that one there, you can see now straight underneath, after the video tag where there, it's put this message. This video type is not supported. I just put any, any message which is you know appropriate for that. So the next part is in E, so in E, we are here. So I put A, B, C. No, we want D. Um, no, I don't want anything in D yet. I want in E. So this one here. So in E, it wants the J31 Serengeti JPEG. So I'm going to go to insert image, the J31 Serengeti JPEG. Click OK. And this I'm just going to do a bit quicker now. Again, I want to change. I want to delete the height. I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to change the width to 100%. Click somewhere in the table. There you go. It's adjusted. In this one here, in F, I want the J31 Maasai image. So insert image. J31 Maasai. 
click OK. Again, click on the picture, get rid of the height tag, that, that height property, because we don't want, we want it to keep the aspect ratio. The width is 100%, oh, 100%, is it 100%? Yeah, we're doing the width, yes. So we're doing the width, perfect. And that's fine there, so click away, there we go. Okay, now let's go back to our question paper. Um, so which ones wanted the height? G. So I haven't done anything in G yet. Uh, so I've got A, B, C, E, and F. Okay, place inline style attributes HTML so that each image with the aspect ratio is maintained. So we've done that. Add appropriate alternate text to all images and in D, enter this. Okay, so I'm going to go put my the, the text. Now let me go put these uh, alternate text in. So here, I'm just going to do this one here. Click on this one, alternate text. I'm going to say um, banner of Tawara balloon safaris. This one here, I'm just going to say a picture of wildebeest. Picture of uh, wildebeest. Not sure if would be actually spelt like that. My dyslexia is kicking in, but doesn't matter. And uh, oh, actually, I, I, I'd rather put you know, a picture of uh, would beast Serengeti or oh, Serengeti. And this one here is picture of giraffes Masai Mara. Okay, and so I put, uh, oh, this one here as well, picture of hot air balloon, pick up this one, picture of hot air balloon. Okay, so I put my alternative text in inside there. There we go. And so now let's move on. So after in D, I want to put the information from J31 text. So D is... Uh, this cell here. So I'm just going to go to my folder. I'm going to open J31 text, double click, control A, control C. I can close that, minimize that, click in here and just paste that in here. And it should be style H2. So I'm just going to select all of this and then go down to my properties area in format and choose H2. Okay. Next, um, it wants in cell G, so we haven't looked at this yet. So in cell G, uh, the text, this. Click on the images above to enjoy the wonders of Kenya and Tanzania. Web page last um, edited by, followed by space, your name, center number, and candidate number. Display the text you have entered as two paragraphs. So this one and this one should be on two separate lines or with a paragraph tag. Set all the text in G as style H3. So I'm just going to do this and fast forward it very quickly. Okay, let's go back to our question paper. Next step, uh, number 10, create a hyperlink from the image j 31 messiahjpeg to open the web page that. Create a hyperlink from the image j 31 it to open the web page that in the browser window that is currently in use. So in the browser window that is currently in use, this one. So let's go here. I'm going to click on the first one, which is the J31 Maasai picture. This one here, I'm going to go down to here. And where it's got the link, I'm going to click on my folder. And I want the HTML file for J31 Kenya. That one, click OK. So that's been added. And for the Serengeti one, I'm going to select that picture. Again, I'm going to go to link, select on the folder, and I want Tanzania HTM, J31 Tanzania, this one, click OK. But this one it also wants, when they click on this, they want it, the, the page to open in the same window that's been displayed, um, the, the, the parent web page. So for here, I'm going to go to my target, and I'm going to 
Now you've got some options here. Um, you can use these ones here. Now, if they give you, for example, underscore something, you can just go and type that in directly if it's not one of the options. But basically what I want to do, I want it to open the new web page in the parent web page. So that one there. Number 12, rename the style sheet. So now we're going to start working with the style sheet. So the first thing it does is uh, rename this style sheet here to this followed by your center number, candidate number, for example, that. So let's go and do this first. Before I do anything else, so I'm going to go to File, Save. I'm now going to go to my folder. I'm going to find my style sheet, this one here. It says to rename it. I'm not going to rename it because if I rename it and make changes and then I want to go back to the original, I won't have it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select Control C. I'm going to do Control V. Now, you could always copy paste it somewhere else. And I'm going to rename this one. And this one should be J1, a J31 style sheet. And I'm going to put an underscore, as it says, followed by uh, your center number. So CY127 uh, underscore candidate number 12345. Press enter. So I've made my file here. And this is the one that I'm going to be using. I'm just going to leave this one here as a backup. In case I mess everything up, I've got the original again. It then says, uh, make sure this style sheet is still in cascading style sheet format. Well, I just copied it, haven't done anything. Attach this style sheet to your web page. From here, I'm gonna go to down here where it says class in my properties area. I'm gonna click on this. Now, there, there are other ways to attach a style sheet, absolutely. I'm just gonna show you the one that I, I teach my students. So from here, class, attach style sheet. I'm going to go to browse. I'm going to find my style sheet. Here it is here, the one with my center number, cadet number. Select, click OK, click OK, and my style sheet has been added. And to make sure, I'm going to scroll all the way to the top in the HTML code here. And we can see here in the head tag, again, within this head tag, open close, we've got this link tag. And it says href j31 style sheet underscore my center number and my candidate number. So my style sheet's been attached. As some changes have been made okay so let's go to uh, the next part now here it's all to do with modifying the style sheet so this whole section now is going to be about modif modifying the style sheet and it said look at that 27 marks for what we've done for this style sheet here so what we're going to do in the style sheet here it's 27 marks I mean, that's a whole load of marks. So let's get started with the style sheet. Okay, so before we start actually creating the style sheet or modifying it in Dreamweaver, we're going to first analyze the question, analyze all the properties it wants. And I'm going to spend a little bit more time here explaining each of these properties so you get a good understanding of each property. So the first part is this one here. It says, set the background for the web page so that it has a color width blue component D2, red component 74, green component AD. Now, when it comes to hexadecimal color, it's always going to be R, G, B, red, green, and blue. And it must always be in this order. So when we're going to set the, the color for the tag um, body, because that's the background, then we're going to have to write this with red seven four. So I'm just going to do all these notes just to, so that's going to be the number seven four, the red component. Then I want the green, which is going to be A B, and then the blue component, which is going to be D2. So that's the number I'm going to be using. Okay, so that's that part. We can just get rid of that now. Let's go to the next part that it tells us. So in this next part, it says that we're going to set the style. Uh, the font, uh, the styles for H1, H2, and H3. So all three of these are going to have um, a font style, which is times CY, if that's not available, times New Roman, if that's not available, it's going to be the default uh, serif font. And all and the text for H1, H2, and H3 is going to be black. So we're going to create a style where we're going to have a tag, which is H1, comma, H2, comma, H3, and um, all the properties for the font style and the color will be given to all three styles at the same time. This is a efficient programming techniques. So we've got that part covered. Let's move on. 
The next part says star one, star two, uh, oh, sorry, H1, H2, and H3. They've got different sizes, so we're going to create different tags for each one of these. We're going to see that when we do the style. Then it says set each table margin individually to 5%. So first of all, let's analyze each part of this table. We created a web page. So this is my, my browser. We created a table inside this web page, and we said that this, bra this table is going to be 90% of the browser so if this is the table that we created okay this is 90 percent of that browser window that means we've got an extra 10 percent and what it's saying here is that we want a margin of five percent top left right and, and uh, bottom so here i want a five percent margin a five percent margin at the top it wants a five percent margin and a five percent at the bottom and for the table uh, property the table tag we're going to set the margins so top bottom left and right equal five percent okay then it says set the table cell padding to 10 pixels now the cell padding is if we go draw a let's draw two cells here so these are two cells now if there is zero cell padding think of cell padding as the margins inside the cell so think of each cell as a word document we have margins on the top the bottom the left and the right and that prevents us from writing at the edge of the paper if i have zero um padding in my cell uh, and the cells remember are the td tag so table divisions okay and this uh this here we, we were working on the table tag so if i've got zero padding and i'm writing 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 let's say up here i've got my name uh, I'm just going to put Nick and it allows me to write all the way to the edge. And then when I write something in the next cell, it allows me to write it right on there. So I'm going to write my surname here. And it looks like these two words are linked together because there's no cell padding to separate them. OK, so essentially cell padding creates that margin inside the TDs. So if I have my cell padding that looks like this. Let's say I've got a 10 point cell padding top, bottom, left and right. That's going to give me an available space in here. If I have approximately the same size cell and I have a, a five point padding top, left, right and bottom, that means I can get closer to the edge. Well, OK, my drawing is not that good, but that just gives me more space inside that cell. OK, so this is going to be part of the TD tag. Set all table borders and grid lines to be visible, separate. Now, this isn't borders. This is going to be the table tag. We'll see that. So solid, black, and one pixel. So what? how do we do this? Uh, which property is going to handle the, the, the borders and the grid lines? Well, essentially, a table has got the table, which is the outside perimeter wall of the table, and the inside TDs, each TD has its own borders. These are called your, essentially, the grid lines, the inside lines, these red ones here. So the table tag will deal with the black outer border. The TD tag will deal with the borders inside these red ones. So I need to set visible, solid, black and one pixel wide for both of these tags so i'm going to put them both together for efficient programming techniques now separated this one here this is what we saw at the beginning when we were analyzing the properties of the table from the question paper so we saw that we had these double lines and we had these double lines because we said that the property border collapse was set to separate so we get these double lines. If they were not set to separate, our TDs would look like this. So three cells will look like this, just one line separating them. So here we need to set the border collapse to separate, and the border collapse is controlled by the table tag. Okay, because of the properties of the table, whether the border is going to be collapsed or not. Okay, the next one here, it says set the spaces between the borders of all the table elements to 10 pixels. Now that basically means here, 
So if I draw the, uh, the next cells down here at the bottom, so these are border collapse equals separate. This basically means that the distance, the space between here and here, and the space is here, the horizontal and the vertical is going to be 10 pixels. Okay. And again, uh, this is determined by the table tag because it's the table tag that's going to have the property for border collapse equals separate. And then we also set the property what the distance is going to be for the horizontal and the vertical. OK, now that we've analyzed this style sheet, we can now generate it in Dreamweaver really quickly. Let's get started. OK, I'm back into Dreamweaver. What I want to do now is just make sure I've got my CSS designer available. So I'm just going to expand this because I reduced it before. And a little trick I show my students as well. If I, I want this properties area to be nice and take all of the height of the window. So I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit, a little bit more. There we go. And you can see that properties uh, uh, area just opens up on the right hand side. Now I've got a tutorial which uh, is the introduction to Dreamweaver and it shows you how to set up your Dreamweaver interface to look like this if you like this view. Um, so I'm not going to go into that now. The next thing is I want to open up the style sheet. Now because I've already attached the style sheet that I'm going to be working on to this web page. So here's the web page that it's uh, I've got open, TBS HTML at the top. And at the bottom, it shows you all of the things which are linked with this web page. And one of those things is the style sheet. So I can click here and I can see the style sheet. I could also just go to file open and open the style sheet. And that would add it as a separate tab at the top. But still, whatever's in here is what's going to be displayed here because this style sheet is linked to this web page. So I'm going to work. I'm going to close this one at the top and I'm going to work directly from this one here. Now, I can see straight away that somebody's already tried to modify this style sheet, apparently a trainee, so on and so forth. And I can see it's wrong because it's all gray. I can see why it's gray. Because we can see here that the comment hasn't been closed properly. It should be star slash, but even this is wrong. So I always say to my students, delete any style sheet they've given you, which they say it's got errors or it's got errors. Just delete everything. All gone. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click here and I'm going to add my first tag. My first tag is going to be the body tag because essentially it says that I want the background color to be and we want reset the, the red component, then the green, then the blue. So let's go back. So from here, I'm going to go to selectors, click on the plus sign. I'm going to type body because it's the body tag that I want. Let's get this pad out of the way. I'm going to press enter and enter and that's going to add the body tag here. I'm going to come over this side and I want the background color. So this is background. Click on this and I'm going to choose the color. I'm going to type the color here. I'm going to enter the first component, which is red 74. I'm not going to delete this hashtag because that's what says it's a hex hexadecimal number. OK, um, then I want green, which is a B. And then I want D2, which is blue. And I'm just going to press enter and look at that. Can you see because I'm modifying the star sheet from uh, from the, from the web page and the component which is linked in the web page, I can see the changes happening live in this page. Okay, back to the question. So we've done these this part here. I want to create the font styles H1, 2, and 3 to be times CY times New Roman. If that was not available, the default uh, serif font and the text H1, H2 to black. So let's go do that now. I'm going to do this very easy. I'm just going to uh, click down here to go to the next line. Click on the selector plus sign, type H1, press enter and enter again. So I'm modifying the H1 tag. I'm going to apply everything here and then just add H2 and H3 to it. So if I can't remember how to write the code, then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to here where the text is in the properties, go to font family and just choose one of these which has got at the end serif font because that's going to be the last one select it and i'm just going to stretch this out just to make it easier to see this code so it says here font family this font here doesn't have speech marks this font does have speech marks the reason why is because this font has got a space between the two words so this font has got a name with two words and it's separated with a space so that it knows where the name of this font starts and ends. It has to be speech marks. If it's only one word, it only needs one. 
So I'm, I am do, I'm going to delete all of this. So actually, I want times new Roman. So I want times CY times new Roman serif font. So these are the two, the last ones. That's okay. So I'm just going to delete everything before that comma up to here. And then the other font that I want is times CY. It's got a space. So I need to put speech marks times space CY with capital. OK, and now I, it says font family is going to use time CY. If that's not available, times new Roman. If that's not available, serif. OK, let's go to the next one. Oh, I also want black um, and I haven't done my official programming technique. So I'm also going to click here, go to properties and make sure the text here, choose black and click enter. Now, because this is for H1, H2 and H3, I'm going to click here where it says H1, type comma, H2, comma, H3. So now that property is applied, this two property is applied to all three tags. Okay, so now I'm going to click on a selector. I'm going to add the H1 tag, H1, enter and enter. It says that heading one should be center aligned with a 16 point font. So I'm going to go to my text. I'm going to choose center aligned and the font size is going to be, I want points because it says points. So PT and I'm going to choose 16. Press enter. So we can see that being added there. I'm going to add a selector type H2. Press enter and enter. There's my next tag over here. And this one should be a fully justified 12 points. So I'm going to go to my text. I want fully justified. And the font size is going to be PT for points. And we're going to do that. As well. And you can see in my web page that as I'm making changes, everything is changing automatically for me. And so I can see that this is actually being applied to my web page, H3. And H3, it says uh, it should be uh, left aligned with a 10 point font. So go to text, left aligned with a font size of 0.10. OK. Next, set each table margin, it says, so this one here, set each table margin individually to 5% of the width and height of the browser window. So it wants individually. Well, let's go have a look and see what that is. So I want the table margin, so that's going to be my table tag. I'm going to click on plus sign, type table, enter. And from here, I'm going to go to this part here, layout. And I can see I've got margin. So this is the top margin, the left, the right and the bottom and it wants it individual so over here in my table tag i should have a separate one for top margin left margin right margin and bottom margin so to do that it wants percent so here i'm going to click i'm going to choose percentage and i'm going to make that five and i'm just going to do the same for the next one as well make that percent make that five I, there is a easier way of like linking all of them together at the same time but i'm just going to do it this way to make sure that each one is added and you can see here on the left it's adding them separately so let's change that to five and then the last one percent and make that five okay and now you can see the my table margins each one has been added separately um, of the width height of the browser window right set the table cell padding to td now we said cell padding is part of it is the td uh so to 10 pixels not to 10 td um and so i need to add a td tag and from here i'm going to choose the padding so i want the padding property i want 10 and it says for all of them it just says cell padding to 10 pixels so i can just do this this is already pixels. I'm going to change this one to 10. So I'm going to show you the other way now. 10. And then I'm going to click on this thing here, which is going to link all of these. Well, it's supposed to. Let me just change that to 10 again. And there you go. So with that link, when you make a change to one, it will apply it to all of them. And when I come here, look at that. It's added all four of them for me. So that's the other way of doing it. On this, uh, On the table margin, what we did we left this unlinked. We actually linked it afterwards, so we had to do it individually. All right, so 
uh, go to the question paper and here it says set all table borders and grid lines to B. So we said uh, table borders and grid lines is going to be the table and the TD. So I want the table and TD for visible, solid, black and one pixel wide. This one is only the table tag we said. So let's go back. So I'm going to add another tag. I'm going to put table again. And the reason I'm putting table is because I'm going to link this one with the TD tag, just like we did H1, H2, and H3 uh, up here. Okay, so let me just press enter. Now, before we added the properties for H1 uh, only and then put comma H2, comma H3 up here, this time I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to put table, comma, TD. So you can just so you can see, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go to my properties and I'm going to modify the properties for the borders. And that's this one here, border. So what I want for my border is the following. I want it visible, solid, black, one pixel wide. So width is going to be pixels. And I'm going to change that to a one. I want style is going to be solid. I want color to be black. So you can see here for table and TD, border is one pixel, solid, that. Okay. And... Um, that's it so we can see here all of that there so now i want to do this one here separated okay so that's going to be part of the table tag now because it's only the table tag i'm going to go back to table here this property here i'm going to click in here go over here now and for the borders i'm going to say border collapse here it says separate okay and then border spacing it's got two it's got for the horizontal and the vertical and if we look in the question paper if i remember correctly over here it says set the spaces between the borders of all table elements to be 10 pixels so we've done this one here the separated now we're going to do this one as well so here i'm going to make sure that's pixels yes it is and i'm going to change that to 10. now so if i change oh, well done. let me just escape in fact i'm just going to modify it from here border spacing so after i put my border spacing i'm going to put this one to 10 and this one to 10 as well okay and now that's been done so essentially now what i've done i've got i finished all of this correct and edit the comment at the start so I, I did this already i deleted it i didn't correct it but it says correct and edit the comment the, the comment at the start of the star sheet to contain your name center number and candidate number so I deleted that and I deleted it because it was a mess. Uh, and if you didn't know how the comment should close then you're going to have a hard time. So I'm just going to add the comment at the beginning now. OK, so at the top of my style sheet, I'm going to click right before body. I'm going to press enter and I want to put my comment, which has got my first name, my center number, candidate number on this line here. If you can't remember how to put a comment, uh, then this here's a little trick. You can go to file new and choose css open that and this just makes a css document and the first thing it puts at the top is a comment so i'm going to copy that you can actually insert the comment but this is one trick that i find my students remember a bit easier and i'm going to paste that there now the comment starts with a slash star your comment goes in the middle and then star slash so here the css document i'm going to replace that with my name candidate number uh, sorry, center number one CY127 and candidate number 12345. So I've added my comment as well. So the next thing that it wants, I'm just going to save this. It says save this in your folder, where well, it's already there. I'm just going to go to file save. And the next thing I want to do is take a screenshot to show the file name and all the contents of your star sheet and place this in your evidence document. So I'm just going to go back here. I'm just going to spread this out a bit. OK, so I can see all of this window. Now, this is going to be a bit tricky for me because I've actually zoomed my window. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close my properties. That gives me a bit more space there. And I'm just going to take a screenshot now of this. New. And I want to make sure that the name of the style sheet that you can see here, you can see there's the name of the style sheet with my details and center. Now this I can go put in here as evidence. Two. And I'm just going to bring that down so it goes to the next page. So the evidence number is together with the image. I'm going to go down to the bottom. 
and just press enter to go to the next page. So I'm ready for the next one. Make sure your screenshots are easily readable when you print them. Okay, so we can get rid of that. And now we go to our question paper again. So I've done that. It says save your web page, display your web page in a browser. If necessary, resize it so that all the page can be seen, all text can be easily read, the address bar is visible. Take a screenshot evidence showing your web page in the browser. So going back, I'm just going to repair this a bit here, expand that. I'm going to go to File, Save. Uh, it's already saved. Good. So one thing you don't want to do is to take a screenshot from here. This isn't in the browser. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go to Save. I'm going to go to File, Save. It looks like it's saved, but I'm just going to make sure I've got the source code saved as well because that I've got this saved, the star sheet. I want to save this as well. Save that. And now what I want to do to view my web page, I'm going to go to my file, which is here. Here's my HTML file. I'm going to double click on it so it opens in the browser. Look at that. Can you see? Straight away, everything looks good. Now, to resize this, because this is taking 90% uh, of the window, if I make the window narrower, it's actually going to bring everything up. Now, on this particular screen, because I've got it zoomed in 25%, it's not going to be that good. So I'm just going to come over to this screen. I'm going to drag my work over here, which is a normal size window. Okay, so this isn't zoomed in. And if I now do this, drag that all the way down. I, there you go. Look at that. I can see all of my web page now. There it is there. Okay. I can see the name of my uh, HTML file. I can see all of the web page, all the borders, the border collapse property is separate, my background, everything. So I'm going to take a screenshot of that. That looks perfect. So I'm going to go to new. And I'm just going to take it. And you need to take a screenshot showing the borders, the outside of the window. OK, so let's go back. It has to have this title bar at the top to show that it's open in the browser. If you take it, the screenshot from here, and it doesn't have that title bar, you won't get the marks. So let's go put this in evidence three. Evidence three, press enter. There's my window, and it shows clearly. So now I can go back to this window. Let's see the question paper. So I've done it. Then take a copy of the HTML source and place this in your evidence document, a copy of your HTML source code. So let's go back. I'm going to go to Dreamweaver. And I want a copy of this source code. So I'm going to click here, Control A, Control C, open my document, go to the next page. I'm going to show you a little trick here. Remember, be nice to your examiners and they should be nicer to you. Evidence 4. Now I'm going to paste that here. It didn't say a screenshot. It wanted the text. It wanted a copy of it. You can see all of this text comes out in a double line spacing. So I'm going to select all this code. And you should know how to do this because you've, you're you going to do paper two, which is word processing. I'm going to select all of this, go to the paragraph, change this to the spacing after to zero. And line spacing single, click OK. And that should make everything just a little bit tighter and neater. And there you go, fits on one page now. So much easier for your uh, examiner to mark your paper now. OK, so go to the next page. So I'm ready for the next one. Yeah. And go to question paper. Then task four, printing the evidence. So here you're going to print your evidence document. OK, we finished with the web page design. OK, so we're going to start with the, the spreadsheet component. So here we can see the question. It's got some text at the top. Basically says you're going to create a spreadsheet to display data about safety equipment required for a hot air balloon. Nothing useful there. Number 15 now. So let's read all of this. Open and examine the file that in a spreadsheet package. This file will be used but must not be edited. And then it says open and examine the j31balloon.csv in a spreadsheet package. Save this spreadsheet with the file name balloon, followed by your center number and candidate number, for example, that. And then place in the header left aligned your name, center candidate number, and right aligned the automated file name with no file part. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to just jump over very quickly and do that. So here are my files. I'm going to open up the first one, j31 tables. 
and then I'm going to also open up the other one balloon okay so I've got these two files here the first thing that I want to do is this one here called j31 balloon I'm just going to rename it put my header and everything so let's just do that now uh, I'm going to go to view I'm going to go to uh, page layout top left corner I'm going to type my details One, two, three, four, five. And on the left, on the right hand side, right aligned, I want the file name. So making sure I'm in the header and footer ribbon at the top, I can see I've got page numbers, current date, current time. I want the file name. Doesn't want the file path. There we go. And now I'm just going to save this file, save as. I'm going to save it with the name uh, capital B, Paloon. C Y one two seven one two three four five and i need to save that as an excel workbook so it's got the correct extension click on save let's just make sure that my uh i'm going to go back to my normal view so i'm going to go to view normal and i'm just going to go to a uh, print preview so file print to make sure there you go my header displays my details on the left and the file name on the right perfect Okay, so now let's go and review this data. So I'm just going to zoom this in. The first thing I do is click on that top left corner here. And I'm going to double click between any two columns. So it automatically adjusts all the column widths so I can see the data. So I've got here balloon name. I've got an item number and it gives me these. So chances are here for equipment item. I'm going to need to do some kind of B lookup or some kind of um, some other function that's going to look up the equipment item. And then here, if something is checked or something, um, well, we'll see what the question paper says. Let's go have a look at the other file. Again, I'm going to double, I'm going to click in the top left corner, double click between two columns so I can see everything. And I can see here, I've got this thing here called item table. So this is my item table. This is the item number, and this is the equipment item. So that ties in nicely with what this one is in b5 i want the equipment item this is the item number so that's probably going to be a basic v lookup function okay let's go look at the next part this here looks like another table so this is the balloon health and safety table okay so you've got balloon name these are the balloon names you've got item number so these are the item numbers so that again ties in very nicely with this item number here so chances are you're going to be doing a search on the balloon name because it gives you a balloon name called eta let's go have a look All right so the balloon names are alpha beta gap oh look at that the greek alphabet hello again from sunny cyprus greek so there you go the greek alphabet um so so that's eta Okay, so you've got the balloon name. You're going to be doing a search on the balloon name. And then the item number, which are these things, this is going to be what it looks like. Most likely, this is going to represent the column number. So if I want, um, let's say, the value of ETA, the balloon name ETA, and the item number three, then that will be the intersection of this and this. So that will be the answer. So remember, the VLOOKUP has got a uh, um, the, the column lookup value. So but what I do see from here is that if I do this for my table and the item number is number three, I'm going to have to say whatever the item number is plus one for the column, because this is actually column one, two, three, four. So it would always be the item number plus one. Let's go to the question paper and see how we're going to proceed with this. Enter a formula in cell B5 to look up the equipment item using the item number in cell B4 for the value and the external file that for the array. Okay, that makes sense with what we just said. So let's go do that now. So I'm going to go to B5. I'm going to type equals to, let me just zoom that in a little bit more because we've got space, equals to V look up. It's a vertical lookup. So um, now my lookup value is going to be this one here, comma. And now I need my table array. Well, that's going to be the other. That's going to be this table here. Now, we don't need the column headings. At the top here now, in my formula bar, I'm going to press comma. 
I want to get the result from column number two from this array because the lookup value column is always column one. So that's one, two. And I want an exact match. So only if it finds an exact match in the lookup column will it return a value. So I'm just going to put here false. And close that and press enter. OK, and there we go. And let's just double check this. So um, item number seven should be oxygen storage equipment. Let's go look. So number seven, there it is there, oxygen storage equipment, it worked. And you could always try and change the number as well. So I'm gonna put a number two, make sure my VLOOKUP works. If I change that to a two and press enter, there you go, that works. Let's take that back to seven. Okay, now that makes sense with the question paper. And the reason why it makes sense is if you look at the marks, it says five, and the VLOOKUP itself has got five components. Equals to VLOOKUP. That's one mark. Then the lookup value, in this case, B4. That's two marks. The table array, that's three. Then the column index number, so that'll be getting the answer for column number two. And then finally, whether it's a uh, range lookup or an exact match, number five. So five marks make sense for the B lookup value. So I know I've done this right. So use the marks for each question to give you an indicator of what it is you have to do, how much work you have to do. If it's a question that's giving you here, let's say 10 marks, and I just put a simple V lookup, I've done something wrong. There's, there's a deeper meaning somewhere which I've missed. So let's go to the next question. This one is worth four marks. Here it says, enter a formula in B7 to display the date and name of the employee who, checks the, who checked the item of the safety equipment. Using the balloon name, so I want to use the name of the balloon, the item number, and the external file that. Okay, well, let's go have a look. So in this case, we want to use the balloon name and the item number and to see who checked it and put it in this answer here, so B7. So let's go to the other table. Here it is here. So if we're looking at this table here, we've got the balloon name, and this is what we saw when we analyzed. It actually makes sense, doesn't it? So this one here is the balloon name. So this is going to be my lookup column, the first one. So I can use a VLOOKUP. And then the return path. So when it finds a match, which column is it going to get the answer from? Well, that's going to depend upon the actual item number. In this case, it will be seven. So it has to automatically be able to go to number seven and that will give you the date and the person who actually hired it out that item with item number seven that balloon name item number seven so in this case we cannot like before just say the column index number is going to be number two or number seven because then it won't work when we change the item number here so when we change the item number here the column index number has to change. Now, because the column index number is a number, then whatever that number is, if we add one to it, it will correct, choose the correct one. For example, in this table, this, this section here, the first column is number one. So if I want to return the values from column number with item number four, I need to choose column number one, two, three, four, five. So whatever the index number is, plus one. So let's go and do that now. So in this case, it's going to be equals to V lookup again, because the lookup is vertical. Open the brackets. The lookup value is going to be the balloon name, comma. Now I need to go and find my table array. So I'm going to select from the table name all the way down to here. So up to item number 13. Now, here I'm going to put comma. Now I'm going to go back to my table and the column index number is going to be whatever the item number is in here plus one. Okay, comma. Well, again, I want an exact match. So only if it finds an exact uh, match with the balloon name. So that's going to be false and close the brackets. So what is this What is this doing? If I press enter, let's see. So it's got 30th January 2021 by 
Pato, Pato, I don't know how it's pronounced. So what did this do? It checked the ETA and the item number is seven. So it went to the table. It first looked in the first column because it's a VLOOKUP, it found ETA. And then the column number was whatever item number we had, which was seven plus one. So it returned from column number eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there it is there. That was the answer. Okay, so if I just zoom that out a bit. So from here, if I go down to here, there you go. And you got the answer from here. 30th January, Peter, because that first column here is column number one. And then you've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. It's actually only worth four marks. I'd expect that to be a little bit more. So uh, we've done that. Let's go back to our question paper. Okay, then it says print your spreadsheet showing the formula. Okay, that's simple enough. Um, we're just going to go here. And I'm just going to do my little trick with holding the control button and the little squiggly line underneath escape to switch to formulas. There you go. You can actually see the formulas by going to the formula section at the top and say show formulas. Make sure your formulas are displayed in full. That will be wrong. So just double check what I always do again. Click the top left corner, double click between two columns, and that will automatically adjust all the columns so that they display all of the information. Nothing is chopped off. So that's a quick fail safe. So it wants me to print this. So I will go from here, file, print. Does it say anything else? Let's just have a quick look with the printing. Uh, yes, it does. Print your spreadsheet showing the formula. Make sure it's in landscape orientation. The row and column headings are displayed. The contents of the cells are fully visible. Okay, so let's just go back. So I'm going to go to print. I'm going to choose landscape orientation. Um, everything is fully visible, but I'm also going to go to page setup. And then from here, I'm going to go to margins. No, sorry, where am I? Sheet, that one. And I'm going to say row and column headings. And that's just going to add the column and the row headings there so they know exactly where you've placed everything. And click print. So that one's finished. I'm going to cancel that. And I'm going to go back to um, removing show formulas now. So I'm going to remove it. That's where the button is. Again, as soon as you do that, top left corner, double click between two columns to adjust everything again. Let's go back to our question paper. So we've done that. That's our printout two. Enter into cell B3 the text beta. Enter in cell B4 the number two. Save your spreadsheet. Print the entire spreadsheet showing the values. Make sure the printout fits on a single page wide. Doesn't say portrait or landscape. Uh, contents of cells are fully visible. Row and column headings are not displayed. And that's it. It's finished. That's all I have to do. Perfect. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to enter this information. So that's going to be beta. There you go. That one's changed. And the item number is two. And that's changed as well. And then I'm just going to, again, Top left corner, double click, make sure everything's selected, nothing's chopped off. I'm also going to do a manual check. So beta, balloon name beta, and item number two. So I'm going to go to my tables here, and that is beta. Uh, where are we? Item number two here. That's going to be portable lights. So is that correct? Yes, it is. There it is there. And beta number two should give me 22nd February 2022 by Nasarian. So let's just do that. So in this table, I'm going to go to beta, column, uh, item number two. So that's that one. There it is there. It's correct. Okay. That's it. We finished the paper. We basically just now have to go to here and just go to file print. I'm going to make sure I don't want the column, uh, row and uh, column headings there. So I'm going to go to page setup. Go to sheet and remove that. Click OK. And now my printout is OK. So 
that's it. That's the entire paper. You saw it was a very top heavy web design paper. Um, the Excel part wasn't that complicated, but it did need a bit of thought because it had the two VLOOKUP tables. We had to use the item number to return the column index value. So pay a little bit of attention. You do have enough time in these exams providing you work methodically and you don't fixate on one little problem. Okay, if you are taking this examination, good luck to you, and I hope you do really well, and I really hope these tutorials help you out. Um, if you have learned something new, you have enjoyed these videos, you want to be notified for new ones, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you again in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.